super psyched. The check was so big, we're going through the drive-thru. <laughs> Strawberry uh, shake? Yes. Is that what we got? More money, more with, ice cream. With more money, more, more ice cream. Five ninety one. Five ninety one. All right, we got a card there. Okay. Oh, cheers, YouTube family! Boom! Oh, All right, amazing. looks good. See you in the studio. Oh, so tasty! All right, that was good. That was good, and I think we earned it this weekend, right in the Solomon S Lab Sense Seven SGs at the Cirque Series. Uh, so here's my full review of this shoe now this is a very niched down shoe what do i mean by that it's designed for a very specific task meaning trail racing uh on preferably technical trails no longer in my humble opinion no longer than a half marathon okay that's basically as far as i would take this shoe in a trail race but i'm gonna i'm gonna make a pitch to all of you maybe you're in high school maybe you're in college and some of the courses you race on for cross country are really muddy or rocky i had a couple courses in high school in leadville summit county there was a couple courses where i would have considered wearing this shoe in a cross country race absolutely um or here, here's another idea for you if you live near a park, uh, or I'm just going to say, if you live anywhere that gets a lot of rain and you, you want to do some 1K repeats, maybe on some undulating hills and it's a little muddy, uh, wet grass, perfect shoe for that. Absolutely a perfect shoe for that. So it's not just, I think this shoe could be used for tasks outside of uh, just trail racing on technical trails. So that's my thought there. Okay, a couple specs real quick. Let's dive into the weight and the drop. You know how much I love talking about the specs. So here we go. We're looking at a 21 millimeter stack height in the heel, 17 millimeter in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop in the Sense 7 SG. Uh, and I should mention, just for the record, this is the 2019, 2019 iteration of this shoe from Solomon. In, in the men's size nine, we're looking at 7.2 ounces or 204 grams, okay? So we're looking at a nice lightweight shoe. I love that weight so much. And I do believe, oh my goodness, I don't have it out here right now. I do believe this shoe lost almost an ounce from the 2018 iteration. In fact, I will put it on the screen right now. That's in my size right there on the screen. Both shoes, the Sense 6 on the left and the Sense 7 on the right. So that's the weight difference from 2018 to 2019. Thank you, Solomon, for dropping the weight of this trail racing shoe. Moving on to the upper. So the upper was really updated, big update to a single layer mesh. And I'm talking, I've done four, no, three races and a really hard workout in this shoe so far. I'm not seeing any major issues as far as wear and tear on the upper. Like, I, nothing at all. Like, it's a little scrunched up here on the side, but as far as tearing or rips, and you saw the Cirque series, like, that footage, it was not exactly a walk in the park uh, as far as footing goes, and I was on some really technical uh, yeah, I, we even went off trail for about three quarters of a mile where we just were going over a boulder field. And so anyway, good work on the upper, uh, very more nimble. And definitely if you are in wet conditions, the water is going to drain out, I believe, really well from the shoe. I haven't raced yet in wet conditions with the shoe, so I can't attest fully to that. But I can just tell looking at the upper that it is going to drain pretty well for you. And for that midsole, so you see me squeezing the midsole there with my thumbs. It doesn't have a ton of cushion. I'm just going to say that and with a 21 and 17 millimeter uh, stack heights. That's not a lot. OK, uh, but it's built with this energy cell plus midsole. And then they also put in a pro feel uh, plate to help protect your foot from the rocks. And uh, sure enough, yesterday, like, I can't even remember or sorry, two days ago at the Cirque series at Snowbird. I cannot remember a single time where my foot was poked with like a rock through the through the uh, through the forefoot. So that is good work there. Uh, no major complaints on the midsole. I will just say though, if you're looking for a racing shoe that has a little more cushion, this is probably not the shoe for you. Okay, it's 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 a Solomon shoe, and Solomon shoes are known to be a little more firm through that midsole. But frankly, the midsole it just is working out well for me at shorter distances. I would not take this midsole stack height 
past, as I already said, past 13 miles, definitely not up to like a, a marathon trail race or a 50K trail race. For that outsole, the bottom of the shoe on the Sense 7 SG, it is built with a premium wet traction contra grip rubber. And again, I've taken it on some pretty gnarly terrain so far, and I'm not seeing a ton of breakdown, maybe just a little bit after the Cirque race on a couple of these lugs, just a little wear and tear, I am noticing. And I should mention these lugs are six millimeter lug depth. I love it. It's a spot on. I wouldn't want to go up to eight and I wouldn't want to go definitely below four. So I think the six millimeter is just spot on for the lug depth. Uh, I felt totally confident bombing down the hills uh, a couple days ago at Snowbird. And one last point on the outsole is that the lug depth really did well on the Pikes Peak Ascent because Pikes Peak, so many people hike it that it's really become uh, pretty gravelly. Like the, the trail has a little bit of gravel to it. So it's loose rock, little, little, little loose rock. And sure enough, these lugs uh, had a good bite to it in that gravel. And yes, bite is going to be the key word. So good work there, Solomon, on that outsole. Okay, for the fit, let's jump into that real quick. I almost wish I would have gone a half size down. All right, I went true to size and the shoe is a little bit long in the toe box for me, but you know how Solomon uh, runs a little uh, narrow. So if you have a wide foot, and actually I'm gonna put this in the category of the only drawback for the Solomon S Lab Sense 7 SG is that it's it does run narrow. I prefer that for racing. I like a nice snug fit, especially through that heel, so I don't feel like my heel is slipping out of the shoe at all on those steep ascents. But that is, just keep that in mind, if you have a really wide foot, this shoe probably is not gonna work for you. As far as comfort, comfortable through the upper, no issues there uh, at all. And you know, even this quick lace draw system, some people don't like it. I've learned, it took me a little while, but I've learned to come to love it because it, it really does lock your foot down nice uh, through that upper, but it takes a little bit getting used to. So it's not your traditional lacing system on uh, basically all Solomon shoes, the uh, trail shoes these days. It's this quick draw system with this, uh, yeah, just the quick draw system there. Uh, but then also for comfort, if you're looking for a little more comfort through that midsole, this is not for you. Definitely leaning in the minimalist, on the minimalist side uh, through that midsole. So I already gave you the uh, drawback, that narrow fit. As far as the positive, Solomon, I could just, I, I don't know what you're gonna do. I don't, in 2020, how are you gonna make this shoe better? Especially the upper. I'm telling you, that is my number one positive. It is so nimble and comfortable and breathable through this upper, lost so much weight. Again, I don't have it out here right now, but lost so much weight from the 2018 version. So the upper takes the cake for my positive in this shoe. I love it so much. And as far as my score, final score in this full review of the Sense 7 SG, 8.75 out of 10. That is a great score from me. Uh, so nine, I almost went nine, but I decided to keep it under nine for now. Maybe next year it'll bump up to nine. So 8.75, now the price point, oh boy, oh boy. All right, they're not giving it away. A hundred, a hundred and, I think it's still $180. So that's a lot of money for a trail racing shoe. But if you know you're gonna be doing some serious trail racing, um, and maybe it's, you know, we're transitioning in the Northern Hemisphere out of the trail racing season as fall is quickly approaching uh, and eventually winter. So maybe you hold off on buying it now and you buy it in 2020 at a discount because I know that's a lot of money for a shoe that is, but if you're ready to rock and roll some workouts in cross country or on, on very muddy, grassy areas, like boom, this is for you. This shoe is for you. All right. And on to that question of the day. All right, for all the Solomon fans out there, this is for you. What is your number one uh, positive and or drawback for the entire Solomon running shoe lineup? Like if you could make the shoe better, what would it be? Uh, and or what do you love about the Solomon running shoe lineup? I'd love to hear it. Can't wait to read your comments. And I know that's very specific, but that's it, folks. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. It was a great uh, month and a half of racing and doing a little bit of training in the shoe. I'm glad I finally get to give you my final thoughts on the Solomon S-Lab Sense 7 SG. And if you want to dive more into Solomon running shoes, I've got an entire playlist ready for you on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we're going to throw it back to the Pikes Peak Ascent where I wore the, where I raced in this shoe, I should say, uh, down in Colorado Springs. All right, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.